Today is September the 20th, 2013. My name is Tanya Fincham, along with Alex Bishop, and we're with Oklahoma State University, and we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma today to speak with Vida Colver, Colburn. 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 Uh, regarding our Oklahoma 100 Year Life Project. Uh, let's begin with having you tell us when and where you were born. I was born in a small town of Rayma, Colorado. April 10, 1913. Was it on a farm? No, in a little town. What did your parents do for a living? My father was a banker, cashier of the bank, small town bank. And your mother? Housewife. Brothers or sisters? One sister. Younger or older? She was younger, three years younger. Okay. And where did you go to school? Went to school there in the little town of Rama. And after I graduated from high school, I went to Colorado College for a couple of years. And then the Depression came along, and that sort of made a change in my life <laughs> for what, a while. What were you studying to be at, at college? I was just taking, I was, <laughs> I hardly, English teacher, I guess, I would say. I was taking more English. I mean, that was was the line I was headed for, I guess. It's either either teaching or nursing at that time, wasn't it, for women? Yeah, I guess so. I never considered nursing, but uh, English teacher was the... Uh, but then I was out of school for a while and went to business college in, in Denver. And I'd say that's where I got an education that you could make a living with. <laughs> Well, during the Depression, it impacted what you did. How so? Uh, we lost everything. My my father and mother both had stock in the bank, so we lost even our home. So we went to live with an aunt for a while. Uh, and my sister graduated from the town of Monument High School. Uh, Lillian was, um, I, I just was out of school and I worked for a little while for a family in Colorado Springs. But then after my sister uh, got out of high school, my dad was able to get each of us a loan of a hundred dollars. And we went to school on that in Denver. I marvel now when I think back out in the world. but. I, when I was in Colorado College, um, Mrs. Barnes, who was running the Barnes Business College, knew me because her daughter was going there too. And I think that helped a lot because she uh, got jobs for Lillian and me as a waitress in a home in Denver that was, they served about, Oh, the most would have been 40 people, but usually around 25 or so. And so through that job of being a waitress, we got our food. And uh, it was oh, about a five minute walk, I guess, from where we lived. So as uh, soon as we were at the, the were able to get out of school. I, of course, did before Lillian because it was harder for her than it seemed to be for me. And I graded papers for my tuition. And uh, I was just fortunate in, I think, in knowing Mrs. Barnes, you know, through my Colorado College experience. And so then I worked well, I had several different jobs when I first got out of school, but I ended up being uh, secretary to law in a law firm. That's where I was when I met my husband. <laughs> that was going to be my next question, how you met your husband. What year was that? 1937. And did you get married? Got married after? in 1940. 40. And uh, he worked for the Bureau of Reclamation. And he saved up his time so that he had a month that he could take off. I lost my job because <laughs> Mr. Walker said, oh, we just can't keep that open for you for a whole month because 
I said, I'm going to be gone a month. We had a marvelous honeymoon. Went uh, from, we were married in Colorado Springs. Came to Tulsa as one of our first stops because my husband had an aunt who had taught school here for years. Uh, then we went, let's see, Shreveport, New Orleans, down around the coast, all the way to Miami. I had a cousin who had moved there, had two cute little girls. So I have pictures of us at the beach and all that sort of thing. Then we went up the East Coast to, he was from um, Camden, South Carolina. And so, of course, he wanted me to go there to meet his family and various members of his family. Went on over to, uh, where, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name, in, in Carolina that is so, a lo lovely place, um, Asheville. His, there's a street named there for his family, his grandmother. Uh, I met, his father was gone, but I mean his uh, grandfather. But I met his grandmother, and, and now there's a Catholic school on, on that property. But the street is still named Culverin Street. Then we went on to Apex. South Carolina, where his brother lived, he had a little six months old baby. Back across, oh, Arkansas. Roads awful. <laughs> I had an uncle who lived in Sparta, Arkansas, so we stopped there and got back to Denver, I guess, about a day earlier than <laughs> time for him to go back to work. So it was quite an experience and a lovely, lovely honeymoon. In 1940, that was pretty good, too. Yeah, we came home, I think, with about $20 and had found a little apartment, and we just stayed there a month. We said, oh, surely we can do a little better than this. It was, I think it, I don't remember whether it even had a bedroom. I don't know. I can't remember that one because we, we soon found a better place. Well, what had you done for dates before that? What was a typical date? Well, I had a friend that I grew up with. When we were kids, we <laughs> we used to take the train from Raymond to the little town of Simla where we had a school a teacher, music teacher. So I'd kind of gone with him through the years, but um, left him behind. <laughs> When I met my husband, I, I don't know, we seemed to appreciate each other pretty quickly. Would you go to the movies? We went to movies a lot. And I think back, we that was our entertainment, was going to the movies. Uh, in June of 38, his mother and an aunt came to, Car to Denver and uh, went and we made a trip. My husband by that time, my, he wasn't my husband, but my friend by that time had a new Ford. So we took a trip to Yellowstone Park and you know, all the parks, uh, Zion and Bryce and Grand Canyon. Two week trip, very nice trip. So, uh, that was a way of getting better acquainted with him, too, and I always tip kid him that he wanted his mother to meet me to approve. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that uh, that was a nice occurrence, too. A three-year courtship's pretty a pretty long time. It was. It was. A, well, for one thing, he was working on his master's at the uh, University of Colorado, and I helped him type up a lot of stuff that I'm sure wouldn't even be used now. I just go to the computer for it, probably. <laughs> but it was quite a long thesis, and I helped him. With it. But that was probably one of the reasons we were waiting for him to get that finished. 
And once he he graduated, what did you do then? You got married and then? Well, um, three years later, I guess, he got a new job with Panhandle Eastern Pipeline in Kansas City. So we moved to Kansas City and uh, lived there 15 years before we um, came here when he changed jobs to be with the Williams Company's company. And uh, what, what year was that? 43. No, when we came here, mm -hmm. was what, six, about 58, I believe. Yeah. I think that's better. When we first came here, instead of staying here, we just put everything in storage and lived in Pittsburgh for, I don't know, about 16 months, I think. He had a really interesting job there trying to find room to put a pipeline from U.S. Steel to McKeesport. I don't know, someplace. But I'm sure it was a very interesting job for him. It was very challenging, I'm sure. But I think he liked that. Then we came back here and we're here till you want all of this. <laughs> uh, let's see, we, we yeah. it's too, I, I'm just, I've been trying to write my memoirs, but I haven't gotten this far yet. <laughs> uh, we then moved to, uh, when he, he retired two or three times, <laughs> and he'd go back as a consultant and that sort of thing. I'm trying to think of the year, 73, I guess, we went to Cal, uh, he and another fellow started a new company, it was called Butler. Culver and Associates, and we went to Calgary for two, almost two years on a job there with his new company. And then later, um, they had a, a job in Tehran, and I visited there two months one time, and then the last trip I took to Tehran was the day that the Shah proclaimed um, military law. And that poor little driver, we were always met by a driver. He was so frightened, I know, because they stopped him about six times between the airport and our hotel, stayed at the Intercontinental Hotel. That time, I, I didn't walk. When I was there those two months, I would walk from my hotel over to another hotel and visit, and a friend and I would shop and so forth. But that time, after that trouble in Iran, I just stayed in my hotel for the <laughs> couple of weeks that I was there. So that was quite an experience that's different, I think, than most people have had. Mm -hmm. And let's see when we, well, he finally retired. <laughs> well, that, um, he retired and, and uh, Mr. Butler, I guess, sort of took over and then he sold to Wilbro's. So it's now a Wilbro's company. And that's, uh, so then we moved here in, in uh, 2000. And it had a, love, a nice cottage. We lo we liked the cottage very well, but um, his health wasn't so good, and we finally decided to move over here. It's uh, more convenient to get to meals and pick up your mail and so forth. And so he died in um, December of two o seven, and I've just been here ever since. <laughs> And do you have children? No, we didn't have, have children. children. So, so I, I guess that's just kind of it. In the, I usually go, I 
Oh, we had done an awful lot of traveling. We loved taking cruises. I think we took about 13 of them. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't, uh, I just had a good life, I would say. Do you remember your first airplane ride? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> my first airplane line, the lawyer, one of the lawyers in my office had a little plane, and he took me up in the plane. So that was my first airplane ride. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the next, let's see. I just don't remember. <laughs> I took so many that. I think we flew to New York for the, it was at the time of the, it was a convention we were going to partly, but it was the time of the New York um, fair, and I don't know when that was. Well, I know there was one in 64, but there was one before that too, a World's Fair. I think maybe the one in 64 is what I'm thinking about. And because, uh, yeah, that's when it would have been. Very, very good fair, seemed interesting, many interesting things to go to and see. I particularly, well, let's see, in General Motors had a very good display. I don't particularly remember too much about it, I guess. So your husband did not have to serve in World War II? Uh, he very, oh, he wanted to be in the Navy. His brother was in the Navy, his older brother. I mean, his next brother, not his older brother. He had two brothers. One of them was um, in the Army and the other was in the Navy. My goodness, he took, he just tried so hard to get in the Navy. I've got a... I ran across the other day the letter from the Navy saying they couldn't accept him because, well, for one thing, he didn't have good eyes. His eyes weren't very good, and that cut him out, I guess. Anyway, he couldn't. He just couldn't get in, so he never was a, never was in the service. Even though he 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 would have loved being in the Navy, we had a sailboat out here at Fort Gibson, and he loved to. He loved that sailboat. <laughs> he just liked that kind of thing. So these days, can you describe a what a typical day? What you might do in a typical day? Uh, let's take Monday for instance. Uh, we have a little knitting group here that meets at ten. So I I try to go to that. If I read the morning paper, of course. I also read the Wall Street Journal, and you can't read it very well in two hours. Then I go to knitting at 10. Uh, in the afternoon, I've sort of been responsible for our bridge games. We have usually about three tables. And uh, so Monday afternoon is playing bridge. Uh, Monday night. They may might have a program here of some sort. They do have quite a quite a number of very good programs here, so I would say that's part of the the routine that you go through. Otherwise, I read. I love to read, and I read novels as well as as I say that. Wall Street Journal can take an awful lot of your time, as well as a regular morning paper. So I just read. <laughs> well, how do you get your novels? Do they have a library here, or how does that uh, work? Two or three places. One, there's a little room around here they call 265 that is, oh, sort of, um, anyone can go to, and they have quite a few books in there. We do have a library, which is off downstairs on the main, uh, near that lounge. That I don't know how you came in, whether you came front door or what, but anyway, it's next to the lounge there. But I also get books uh, from my hairdresser. She has a lot of pretty good books. So we're no, no trouble finding something to read. What, who's your favorite author? Or, or 
Do, do you have a favorite book or a favorite author? Uh, I've been reading, this is another one of my problems. I'm very poor about remembering the author's names. Uh, Doris, but, oh gosh, I've got one in there. I could look at it, make, make something. Um, she ha writes a, quite a series of novels, and you sort of get interested. She follows the family, you know, maybe from one book to the next. Yeah. I like her books. I think they're good. Um, I enjoyed uh, Brokaw's book, the, the, you know, the one about the, the great generation. Mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So I read a variety of things. Mm -hmm. And what about religion in your life? Was that a central oh, part? Very much important in my life. See, no, I didn't even mention that. I was very active in the First Presbyterian Church here. I always went to the women's uh, meetings and was secretary for a while. And uh, went, you know, regularly to Sunday to. Uh, First Presbyterian Church downtown, but I don't go anymore on Saturday nights. Every week, I go. I will watch our church. They, you know, they have it on TV, and um, it's on. Well, it's on the regular morning, Sunday morning too. But I like Doctor. I like our chaplain here. I think he's great. So. Saturday nights, I looked to my first Presbyterian church uh, meet, uh, which had been the previous Sunday, and then I go here to church Sunday mornings. So I get both good, good from both. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Miller down at First Presbyterian Church is really very fun. He's so good. And we just now are getting another young man that had been here before, and then he went to Scotland working on his uh, PhD there. And so he's going to be back with us now, so that'll make, we're going to have six, we have six ministers. Mm -hmm. And was religion an important thing in your childhood and in your family? And always, yes. We had a little... Um, in that little town, of course, we didn't have a very big church, but a, a minister from Colorado Springs would come out Sundays for uh, for our church. And then um, my grandmother was a charter member of the little church that they had in Elbert. And, uh, you know, if we were, we'd always go there if we were there for the weekend or something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you just you just grow up this way, and now in Denver, I all I was very active in the uh, Denver Presbyterian Church. I was president of their little we call it Diaconia Sunday School. Yeah, I guess church has just always been a part of my life. I remember as a I don't know. 15, 16 year old, I guess, I went to a Christian Endeavor meeting in Denver, which was, I always remember it to this day, particularly the man who directed the music. Oh, he was so good. So, just always a Church, as you say, church has just been part of your life. <laughs> and that event at age 15, what, what do you remember? Well, what, I particularly remember it? this man who was was the music, the uh, <coughs> I don't know, I guess you'd call him director of music. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I particularly remember. Just it was just a nice meeting, you know. Yeah. I stayed with somebody I don't even remember who, as you know that that. Uh, would let us stay there while we went that meeting. That's too long ago. Somewhere or other, that's just uh, <laughs> just not in my memory right now. Except that I do remember going there, Montclair um, Presbyterian Church in Denver. Hmm. I think that's what it's called. Did you sing in the choir? 
Yes, my sister and I both were in a little, a special little choir group in Denver, and we'd go to nursing homes and uh, various places and sing. I have a picture of us when we were, we'd, uh, we each had nice formals, you know, long dresses that we would wear when we'd go in those concert things that we would do. My sister was very good on the saxophone, um, and so as we were growing up, we enjoyed, I would play the piano, she played the saxophone, so <laughs> that was a nice memory too. That was her, when I was trying to get her located in a nursing home, and oh, you're not going to give away my saxophone. <laughs> I said, no, I wouldn't give away your saxophone. So. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's up on the closet shelf now. She doesn't seem to be able to play it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a favorite song? Oh, I don't know, not particularly. We just, well, for, for a little while, we had a little, just while she was still in high school, we had a little band that played for dances every Saturday night. I played the piano, she played the sax, and a friend, uh, in her class too, uh, felt, played saxophone, then, and we had a little fella come out from Colorado Springs. This is when I was in Monument, Colorado. He would come out. He was a drummer, <laughs> so we'd play for the Saturday night dances. Did you have a band name? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> but it wasn't an all-girl band. I was thinking you were going to say that. It was an no, all-girl. No, we had the other two okay. boys. And plus Lillian and me. I don't know how well we played, but they seemed to think it was all right. <laughs> and that was just playing, you know, whatever was popular at that time. That would have been in the 1936, I guess. So you were playing. You didn't get to dance too much then. Well, I had, I had danced when we used to have little dances in Rama, where we were. We we had a wonderful dance a building in um, in Rama, and we had about a five piece band would come out every Saturday night. So of course we I danced then, <laughs> but uh, no, I couldn't couldn't dance when we had our little band. We played for the played for them to dance. Or what were holidays like in, in your childhood? I uh, always had family gatherings for uh, Thanksgiving, for Christmas, uh, at my grandfather, at my grandmother's. We would go to my father's uh, mother's. I lost her when I was 10, but her older daughter still kept the ranch. And, uh, Ran the ranch. I guess it belonged to all of them. There were nine in my father's family. So we would go there in the evening of New Year's, say, we're talking about Christmas, for instance. Uh, they'd put the children to bed, and along about midnight, you'd hear a noise where she'd put, throw a wallet, and they'd roll down the stairs, wake us up. We'd go into the parlor where, oh, they'd have such a beautiful tree. But we couldn't, see, we couldn't get, the parlor door was closed in the evening when we were there. But then they'd get us up and we would have our gifts. And then we would go nine miles farther, probably about 11 miles, I guess, and go to my mother's home. And then we'd have Christmas Day at, with my grandmother, my mother's family, all my cousins, and <laughs> big family gathering. What would be the food? Turkey. Turkey, Turkey and dressing and usual cranberry sauce. And I don't remember what vegetables they had. Well, what did you do for entertainment? You know, some people sit and watch the football game today. What, what did don't, you do? Don't there... have that kind of stuff, that's for sure. <laughs> we played games. Yeah, I've been fiddling with that, haven't I? <laughs> what, what kind of games did you uh, play? We had a little 
pop sort of thing. And I, I don't remember too much about that game, but you'd whirl it top, and I guess it would tell you how many spaces you'd go. I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'd assume in Col I would assume in Colorado that it would be cold during that time, and you'd have to do a lot of indoor. We, after dinner, uh, then we'd clear the table, and the kids could be around the table playing games. Hmm. Well, after we had our gifts. <laughs> that was another <laughs> thing that my grandmother said, oh, that killed us. We had to wait till after we had dinner before we'd have our gift exchange. <laughs> we'd always have a little sack of stuff in the morning, you know, when we first got up. But we'd have to wait until afternoon for our gifts. Did you ever have a particular favorite gift as a child that you remember? The thing I remember is right now is my grandmother gave me a lovely spoon. And... Um, I don't know, I don't. I guess it's in the, I've got it around someplace. Anyway, it had my name on it. Hmm. And I thought that was a very nice gift. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, don't particularly remember otherwise. I suppose just usual pajamas and <laughs> socks made something, I don't know. That didn't impress me, I guess. <laughs> And they rolled a walnut down the steps. Yeah, I thought that, that was a German thing. Uh, my grandmother was born in Bonn, Germany. So I think that must have been some sort of a tradition or something. You wouldn't think that that would do that, but it would make a noise enough to give us something. And then when we got there, they said, oh, you just missed Santa Claus. Just went across. He just went over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so is that um, uh, 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 what I want to uh, kind of fast forward and thinking about your life what, what's what is your secret to longevity do you think uh, good genes I presume because my mother lived to be a hundred uh, my father wasn't he he was 84 that's still pretty good age I guess mm -hmm. and my grandfather I believe was 95 when he died so I guess good genes is that your mother's my father? mother's father yeah mm -hmm. now the other father the other grandfather uh, died before I was born mm -hmm. 50 I think he was 55 and and do you have a particular motto or philosophy of life that you live by? I don't believe so particularly. Just um, just enjoy as it, as things come along, I guess. And take them as a, take them in stride. <laughs> Because yep. I did have one period there, just in that depression area, that was pretty, pretty a sad time. But you get over those things and go on. Mm -hmm. Do the best you can. Don't stress over too much. No. Well, you did at the time. I guess it was stressful, but you just, as I say, you just, just like, just the fact that my dad was able to get money. For, those loans and and we both as soon as we had jobs we started paying off those loans one very long where they were all paid <laughs> paid back mm -hmm. but that was just uh, we just had a very loving family my mother and dad were wonderful did she sew and make your clothes your she mother? did when we were little girls mm -hmm. I have a picture in there in the bedroom that shows a, a little dresses that she had made for each of us. But we didn't like it very well when she was sewing because it seemed like she would get, you know, she wouldn't have time for us. She was sewing when we'd come <laughs> home from school. What was the favorite thing that she fixed for you to eat? Eat your favorite dish? Well, when we could, I think I've always been very fond of ice cream. Who has? <laughs> Mother made an ice cream that I thought was so delicious. Some way or other, she would brown the sugar, you know, how they caramelize it. And then, of course, add the cream and the 
it it was sort of a caramely tasting ice cream that was so good. But we we ate we fixed ice cream a lot, particularly in the winter time when it was easy to get get the ice, you know. But we had ice available in the summer. And Fourth of July, for instance, you always had ice cream. Hopefully, you would have chickens would be big enough you'd have fried chicken. So you 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 raised you used your own chickens. Yes. Ah. Usually, I think. <laughs> I mean, for that, I think that was kind of a goal was to have chickens ready by fried by July fourth. Mm-hmm. And would you have to butcher them, or would someone else? Well, my dad always did yeah. that. Mm-hmm. That's something I don't know anything about doing. <laughs> and that's okay. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, did your mother quilt? No, I don't look so. No, she didn't. And that's kind of surprising that she didn't, I guess, because I'm sure a lot of people were quilting. No, I guess the sewing she did just was for Lillian and me. And, um, I, don't, I don't remember that she did any quilting. And I don't know that she did a lot of knitting. My grandmother did. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> now, your sister, is your sister still living? Yes, I'm going to visit her next week. Mm-hmm. And where where is that? She's in a nursing home in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Has to have full care. Mm-hmm. Very expensive, and fortunately she had, had uh, a pretty good trust that has been taken care of. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. <laughs> and have you two remained close throughout the years? Or? Oh, very. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you what do you think has been been a secret to that sibling bond, that the kind of sisterhood bond that you've had? I suppose because we, uh, well, of course we grew up together, but uh, I think we became more bonded when we were going to school in Denver because. Uh, she kind of struggled some of the time, and uh, it, it didn't seem to be, you know, taking shorthand. And, and she she remembers her shorthand. I noticed one time she was doing something, she's still using her shorthand. <laughs> and, uh, but she had a, her husband uh, was a Denver University graduate. And uh, at the time he died, they lived in uh, Maryland for 25 years, and they were just looking forward to the time they could met, get back to Colorado. And unfortunately, he had had polio as a child, so he didn't live to be, I think he was 55, I guess. And she stayed there a few months, and then I went back and helped her move back to Colorado This <laughs> after he was gone. He was with the Bureau of Interior, I guess he was. He was, he was head of the chief. Uh, I said, wouldn't he be interested now in this shale all stuff? Because they lived in Rifle for a little while, uh, starting to develop that shale oil. Uh, and I, he would be, I know, he would just be thrilled with the way they were doing all this shale oil exploration, I guess you'd call it. So, um, they had a good life, too. She later, uh, she was a widow for 17 years and then married a, a friend we'd known forever, lived in our little town. And they had just six years, I believe, of marriage when he died. And so, uh, but then she had a little, well, she had a little stroke, I think, that really made her become, so she, uh, so she can't stand on her feet some way, you know. She just mm-hmm. has to have full care and is in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to going out next week and having a visit with her. Hopefully she, she does have dementia somewhat. But she always seems to to know me, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 
Right. Is yeah. that getting what you'd like to have? <laughs> it is. It's perfect. Now, one, one question I have for you again is, uh, you know, when history is written, what, what do you want it to say about you? Well, I've been trying to write up my memoirs, and it's difficult. I would say just, just want to know that I had an interesting life, I guess, and many interesting experiences, and still fortunate that, fortunate that I can still travel. So that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. In December, I'm going to fly to San Antonio. Uh, my nieces uh, arranged for a bus to take us up to what they call Mo Ranch, which is in north, north of Midland, I guess. Anyway, it's a 90-minute drive from San Antonio going to... Uh, my niece's daughter's wedding, hmm. and it sounds, oh, it's such a pretty setting, it seems, from the pictures that we've seen of it, and because uh, my friend has been, she looked it up, I think, on the internet, and so I shall go to that, and rather than coming back home, I'm going to just fly to Atlanta, where my nephew is going to meet me. Take me to, he has built a new home up in South Carolina and he wants me to see. He always calls his spare bedroom Vida's, Vida's room. So he wants, <laughs> he wants me to come see my room, his room, my room. <laughs> and then he, I'll stay with him for a little bit and then he's going to take me on over to uh, my brother and sister-in-law in, -law in uh, Morristown, Tennessee, where I've spent Christmases now for several years. Even Fred and I spent Christmas there a lot. So that's year. that's in the offing for December. December 14 is the wedding. So you've got plans. Plans. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still drive yourself? I drove myself to the dentist on Monday. A little interesting story, I think, if you want to hear something else. <laughs> I went, uh, after my birthday, I went over here to this tag agency, and I said, I need a new license. And I handed her, I guess, my... And uh, pretty soon she came back and she said, well, you have been approved. But she says, let me tell you, I, I think she said, I've worked here 30 years. You are the only person I've ever had, 100 years old, ask for a license. And they gave me mine. You want to see it? Would you like to see it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really something to be proud of. Good till 19, till 2017. Do you reckon I'll be using it? No, I'm yes, just about will. ready to quit. No. I really, I'm not going to drive much longer. I don't mind driving. I mean, I don't seem to have any problem about it. My biggest problem is walking from here down to that street down there where my car is. <laughs> Once I get in the car, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> However, and then on Wednesday when I went to the dentist, I did have a, a friend took me because I thought, well, it might not be so good to drive home <laughs> if I've been having a lot of, I had a root canal and that takes a lot of time and mm -hmm. don't feel so extra good afterward. <laughs> so, do, do you have any other health concerns at right now? I have a, my left knee is usually kind of sore. I mean, it hurts a lot of times, but you, it just does. I'm just old. <laughs> it's had a lot of wear. Any medicines you have to take daily? Yes, I take, uh, not much. I take a blood pressure pill because I do have a little problem with, with my blood pressure getting a little high, but it, the pill seems to take care of it. And I take one vitamin that's uh, more f that that you take for your eyes that has lutein in it. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, I've been taking some Tylenol this too this week with this. Of course, right now I'm taking an antibiotic, and I'll be glad when I 
I hope it does the job it's supposed to do because I've sure had a sore jaw down here. <laughs> well, how late do you stay up? I try to get to bed by, I'd like to, too, about 11, but it's most always it's midnight <laughs> by the time I get myself around, quit reading. And then get up at? Seven. Seven? Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Of course, sometimes I, I have to admit, when I'm reading the morning paper, I can drop off to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> Well, can you offer some advice for anyone that wants to live to be a hundred? I don't know what it would be. I, how do you know whether you're going to, you just, you don't know that you're going to live one day to the next, I guess. So, um, I, should I say maybe having a happy life probably helps, having a happy marriage. Uh, would be one thing probably that uh, it would be uh, and just as I say good genes <laughs> I don't know what else would be well was there a point when you thought oh I'm going to make it to a hundred oh I've always figured I'm going to make it to a hundred really? for quite a little while now I have I just said my mother lived to be a hundred so I'm going to see if I can't live to be a <laughs> hundred and what did you do for your hundredth birthday Oh How did you my. celebrate? We had a big celebration. See those two books right there, full of cards and things for my birthday. Uh, we had, we didn't do it right on my birthday because that was the middle of the week. But my, I have four nieces and five nephews, and all of them came except one nephew who has had illness. Uh, on Saturday afternoon, we had sort of open house in our theater down in the theater here, big room. I don't know whether you've been there or know well how it is, but it's a nice big area. I had 93 people sign the guest book, and we, oh, the cake was gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know why, but what have I done with my pictures, but anyway, it was a very lovely affair and then we went out for dinner in the evening. There were 24 of us that went to dinner. Did you get to pick? Did I what? Did you get to pick the restaurant? We went out the Oaks. I belonged to the Oaks Country Club for years so I just keep on, don't go much. We just, we went out last evening for dinner but I, my husband, when we first got it, my goodness, I don't know what year it was. My husband was playing some golf, but we finally gave up the golf membership and just had social membership. But I like it, so might as well keep it. <laughs> might as well. Sounds like you've had a, a very good life. I think I have, and that's probably the reason I it has something to do with the fact that you do, that I could live this long, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you sharing your story with us today. Yeah, well. It's been a pleasure.